welcome to a full guide to 1960s fashion. If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Emma and I'm in love with all things 1960s. So this video has been requested for a long time and today I finally want to explain a 1960s fashion to you. We will start at the beginning, talk about the most popular designers, get into the most popular styles, as well as talking about some wonderful 1960s icons. So let's get started. Fashion is always a reaction of what was before, as well as political and social change. And the 1960s truly had it all. The 1960s were a decade of revolution and change in politics, music and society around the world. It started in the United States and United Kingdom and spread to continental Europe and all parts of the globe. The 1960s were an era of protest. In the civil rights movements, people protested against the unfair treatment of races. And towards the end of the decade, more and more Americans and people worldwide basically protested against the war in Vietnam. So because of all of this, the 1960s is a decade that still holds a special significance, seeing traditional hierarchies being dissolved, making way for a modern age. So the way the people in the 1960s dressed was a clear sign of shifting attitudes. In the 1960s, many chose very publicly to start looking different from the norm. Innovative designers and more informal modes of shopping drew a dividing line between the generations, creating a new market for youth fashion. In the early 1960s, style was quite similar to the 1950s, with a lot of fit and flare dresses, but soon hemlines started to rise and dresses became more shapeless. Like in the 1950s, the 1960s really saw youth gaining more dominance and its own income to spend, which truly gave them the opportunity to express their sense of fashion outside of what their parents liked. You also need to take into account that the decades before the 1960s were usually pretty difficult financially for a lot of families, so a lot of people would wear hand-me-downs. But in the 1960s, the economy in many countries was booming and people just made more money that they were able to spend on whatever they liked. Previously, you wanted to have the French style, and fashion was truly catered towards wealthy shoppers, so it truly was extravagant. But soon London became the place to be. Carnaby Street, Savile Row, King's Roads became the places to be, the kind of in-spots in London, and soon London fashion influenced the entire world. It is also important to note that fast fashion originated during this time. Young people were creating new trends and using clothing as a form of personal expression. There also was an increasing demand for affordable fashion. Textile mills opened across the developing world and low quality mass produced clothing took over. Shopping for new clothes became a hobby and meant social status. So while in the 1950s department stores were the place to shop for clothing, in the 1960s boutiques were all the rage. These smaller self-service shops took the world by storm and it kind of created for shopping to be a more social activity. It truly went from a necessity to something that meant fun and hanging out with friends. One of the most notable boutiques of the time was Biba founded by Barbara Hulaniki, and it was one of the most popular shops of the 1960s and 70s. The clothing was influenced by decadent styles like Art Nouveau. It featured many swirls and art deco, which you can also see in the label and logo font. Many young women wore Biba clothes, and they soon expanded with a makeup range and a magazine. Compared to a department store, Biba was truly something else. It was dimly lit with loud music blasting out on the street. It was also filled with antiques and the walls were covered in carpets, generally creating this dark and special atmosphere. There was a large communal changing room for people to try on things and the staff were young and approachable, wearing the clothing and their brand. Notably is that Biba is also a place where Freddie Mercury, the singer of Queen, spent a lot of time. His girlfriend at the time and muse Mary Austin was a Biba shop girl. She actually dropped out of school at 15 and worked at Biba for a couple of years. And she and the influences she had from working at Biba are also set to help Freddie develop his signature style. Biba also had a lot of 1920s inspired styles, a lot of flapper looks and silk headscarf. However, another trend from the 1920s would soon make for the most significant clothing piece of the 1960s, the miniskirt. 
The 20s had shorter hemlines, but in the 1960s, they truly went teeny tiny and short. So the 1960s was a decade where the mini skirt was boring. The typical style of above the knee skirts, having the shortest and most daring hemline was pioneered into fame by Mary Quant. She came out with the design in 1964 and soon her brand would take over the world, especially popular in London. It would soon be seen worn all over the world. Her brand became a go-to for young women, wearing her bright colored dresses and skirt. She also had great influences on mod fashion and is one of the most notable designers of the decade. To go with the shorter hemlines, go-go boots became all the rage. They were usually made from a vinyl leather that was way more inexpensive than the classic leather and the 1960s was also the time where people started to buy more clothing than they truly needed and not only the rich did but basically everyone the idea of wearing one pair of boots all winter and basically all your life until they fall apart was kind of revoked in the 1960s with people buying different pairs of shoes wearing different styles and just experimenting with different looks overall however mary quant wasn't the only one experimenting with shorter hemlines French designer André Courage also experimented with hemlines in the 60s and began to show space age dresses in 1964. They also ended above the knee and they were truly something that hasn't been seen before. The space rage was a huge influence on fashion too. This resulted in a lot of future inspired styles in pop culture such as Space Odyssey, the movie, characters like Bob Relaf, famously played by Jane Fonda, as well as Paco Rabanne and Pierre Cardin championing these styles. The decade also had its own beauty ideals. Twiggy was one of the biggest style icons of the 1960s and she truly embodied the 1960s beauty standard. With a boyish, childlike frame, she replaced the 1950s beauty standard of a curvier Marilyn Monroe. This was truly bringing back a popular body type from the 1920s. And successful models of the decade like Twiggy, Patty Boyd and Penelope Tree truly embodied this beauty ideal. I quickly want to note here that I read Patty Boyd's biography and also listened to this interview with Twiggy and they both said that during the 1960s they weren't eating enough, they were very young and they both said that their bodies isn't something that is to be admired and achievable. But it truly was what the 1960s viewed as the ideal body type for a woman. In the 1960s fashion was loud and it was fun. Lots of bright colors, a bunch of different patterns, A-line silhouettes, fun prints, all of this was seen for both men and women. Generally speaking, clothing just became less formal, and this started to show in the 1950s when James Dean ditched the suit for his classic white t-shirt and jeans. Suits were still seen, but they were now usually boldly colored with different prints and patterns, and styled with colorful pattern, button-ups and ties. The Mondrian dress by Yves Saint Laurent in 1965 was very famous for its pop art funky style. This truly is one of the styles that is recreated the most up until this day and for a lot of people I think this is the true embodiment of 1960s fashion. The new generation wanted to experiment with fashion and so did the new up and coming designers. There were dresses made out of paper, they were usually meant to only be worn a couple of times, they had funky prints or even Bob Dylan's face printed on them. Mod fashion was arguably one of the most popular styles of the decade. Coming from London, it took the world by storm. Mod came from the term modern and its movement felt like something entirely different, something that had never been there before. Mod wasn't only a way to dress, it was a way to live. Wearing bright pop colors, shift dresses and short sharp hairstyles, the mods were easily identifiable and became their own subculture. Contrary to the mod was the rocker. Wearing lots of dark leather and riding motorcycles, they formed another popular group of the 1960s, the rockers. Famously featured in the Beatles 1964 film A Hard Day's Night, where in one scene a woman asks Ringo Starr, are you a mod or a rocker? To which he responds, I'm a mocker. Are you a mod or a rocker? Um, no, I'm a mocker. Oh. This is such a great movie scene and I see it referenced all the time. If you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend you to watch it. It gives you a beautiful insight on 1960s fashion and it's just a lot of fun. 
A hairdresser named Vidal Sasson, I hope I said that right, I already mentioned him in another video, I'm gonna link that here, all about 1960s hair, and back there I was also kind of scared that I butchered his name, so I'm truly sorry. But he was the one who made the blunt straight bobs popular. Fringes were also blunt, and hair became as fun and artsy as clothing and accessories. Makeup also shifted in the 1960s. While 1950s makeup featured a red lipstick and a more toned down eyeshadow tone, the 1960s really turned that around. Bright colorful eyeshadows with strong eyeliner added to the loud outfit. A lot of cut creases were seen. Inspired by Twiggy, painted on or glued on accentuated lower lashes became very popular, also adding to the doll look that was truly sought after in the 1960s. Accentuating the eyes was truly all the rage, while lipstick was usually light pink or not worn at all. So as mentioned with the makeup, the doll-like appearance was a very popular style in the 1960s, with childlike elements like white tights and Mary Jane shoes. The shapelessness of dresses also added into this look. Contrary to their parents, young people of the 1960s weren't urged to grow up because of an ongoing war, and the decade had a carefree spirit to it. It was filled with happy music, a lot of popular comedies on the TV and in cinema, and it just truly felt like the world was going to be a better place. To go with the girly style, long hairstyles tended to have lots of curls, perhaps a half updo with a big beehive, like seen on Bridget Bardot flowers and bows in the hair and a childlike hairstyle with pigtails and hairbands were also really popular. The 1960s was also the decade of music festivals. The Montcherry Pop Festival in 1967 and the Woodstock Festival in 1969 were places for people to meet, hang out and just enjoy some music outside while not having to conform to any sort of social standard. The attendees of these festivals wildly ranged, but a lot of them were younger people and so-called hippies. So the hippie movement was truly about peace, it was about love and freedom, which of course was a reaction to the ongoing war in Vietnam. With hippies mostly wearing flowy clothing, a lot of maxi dresses, which clearly stood out against the mod aesthetic with the really short skirts. They were also usually barefoot and didn't wear a lot of makeup. Hair was grown out and long unlike the mods. It was wild and untamed. Both men and women started to grow out their long hair and that became more mainstream in the 1970s as did the hippie movement. This style also became more mainstream in the 1970s when designers took on more hippie looks after originally a lot of the hippie dresses had been handmade or just hand crocheted. A lot of it was recycled pieces and the entire idea of capitalizing off of that trend, there's a lot of talk about it. A lot of the real hippies from the 1960s say that that was false, but it's just the fact that the style became very popular in the 1970s. Also among a lot of people who didn't live the hippie life. Musicians such as the Beatles or the Rolling Stones ruled the 1960s. The Beatles were style icons of every trend and dictated a lot of men's fashion during this era. But soon their girlfriends and wives did too. They became fashion icons of the decade, especially Patty Boyd, George Harrison's wife, and Jane Asher, girlfriend of Paul McCartney, became fashion role models to many young girls. The Beatles popularized the fringe for both men and women, and it was all thanks to a photographer from Germany called Astrid Kircher. She combed their hair forward, giving them their signature Beatle look. When the Beatles came back from Germany to the UK, they got a manager called Brian Epstein and he had them smarten up from their rocker look. While they had been wearing jeans and leather jackets a la James Dean before, this is when the matching suits came into play. He also had them wear Cuban heeled boots, which men started to try generally. Even a small heel for a man was a really new thing that fashion truly hadn't seen since maybe Georgian times. We were in an era where people could afford to have fun with fashion, and that included men. This uniformity helped the Beatles have a clear image, and their fans and many young men dressed alike for a feeling of belonging. When the Beatles went to India, they became very into the style and took a lot of that home. So I talk about this a lot on my channel, how the Beatles went to India, but it was so significant, and I think people truly don't understand 
how significant it was to them personally, to their music, to the style, and to the influence and message it sent out to the world. They grew their hair and facial hair and were really into the hippie look. Being the icons they were, they definitely added to the 1960s hippie popularity. Native American styles and Western clothes, like cowboy boots, became popular amongst hippies, clearly contrasting the mods with their dapper style. Of course, the 1960s had more style icons than just the Beatles. Edie Sedgwick, for example, was Andy Warhol's muse and is often portrayed as the original it girl. Her quirky looks soon became influential to many. Then there's also Jean Shrimpton. She was a popular 1960s model and she actually paved the way for Twiggy, popularizing a more leggy and slender look. And then there's Jane Birkin. She was so big, she even had the Birkin bag named after her. That was actually in 1984 when on a plane, her bag popped open and everything fell to the floor and an MS executive sat there and watched. Alongside Brigitte Bardot and Francois Hardy, she was one of the most popular French women in the 1960s and a fashion icon to many French women and women worldwide. The 1960s didn't only have new trends for the young generation. Jackie Kennedy was influential for older women, wearing simple matching suits. Contrary to the classic first lady and all the first ladies that came before her, she chose brighter colors and shorter hemlines. Almost like the Beatles, a lot of women wore matching colorless suits too. Le Smoking by YSL was a suit made for both men and women. And it truly had women play with masculine tailors and shapes too. Starting the androgynous trend that was later seen on popular figures like David Bowie. There are so many wonderful style icons of the decade, I truly cannot name them all. But just to give you a rundown of a few very popular ones, there were The Supremes, Diana Ross, Mick Jagger, Jimi Hendrix, Marianne Faithful, as well as a bunch of subcultures that had their own styles, like groupies and the beatniks. Don't worry dolls, because I'm actually starting a new series where I am breaking down all of these styles, a bunch of these fashion icons for you and just give you a really good insight into all of these fashion subcultures. This video truly just was an overview to just kind of explain a little how the 1960s fashion developed, why it was popular and some of the most most popular trends. But I really want to break it down, I want to get into detail because I know you are interested and this is my passion so I cannot wait to share this new series with you. So make sure to subscribe if you're interested in seeing all of these designers, subcultures and people being analyzed and just me sharing their stories with you. So I want to thank you for watching this video today. I want to thank you for spending time with me. If you are intrigued with the 1960s fashion now and you're wondering how can I start a 1960s wardrobe, check out this video right here where I explain all of that to you. Please leave a comment down below telling me what you think about this new series and also which of these subcultures was your favorite and if there's any 1960s style you are really drawn to or any subculture, person, anyone you would want me to feature. I hope you have a beautiful day, go out, enjoy the sunshine, take yourself some time to focus on you and your mental health today and I will catch you in the next video. Bye everybody!